Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be going over some helpful information that you might have not known in Contact A-888. Before we get started, I do want to make note, this video will not cover in detail builds. This will cover general information regardless of what class you're picking. And if you're a new player and you want a rundown of the game, I've already got a video on the channel explaining the game and introducing it if you're new. If you want the link to that video, it'll be over in the eye icon up on the top right, or you can find it in the link in the description down below. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. Let's go over some of the more simple things that you might have not known if you're a new player. For starters, there are three main keybinds that you might have not have known about. Z, B, and V. Z is used to ping a location for danger or to get the attention of your teammates. V is for voice lines, which is mostly a cosmetic thing, but it could be funny and helpful at times. And lastly, B. Whenever you press B, you'll drop some cash. This could be very beneficial if you have a bunch of cash and your teammate needs some to buy a new weapon. Pressing B will drop 25 cash per usage. The next piece of information that can be very helpful to new players is going to be the timer and anchors. At the very top of the screen you'll see two timers. At the very top is going to be the reinforcement counter and the bottom one is going to be your actual playtime counter. The one that matters the most right now is going to be the playtime counter, so the second one. If this counter ever drops a zero, then it's game over automatically, regardless if there's a bunch of players still alive in the map. All around the map there's going to be some anchors. These need to be activated to increase the timer. However, this doesn't really mean you should activate all of the anchors. The timer itself has a maximum time count of 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Every time a teammate activates an anchor, you get 30 seconds added to your total time. Additionally, an anchor takes about 1 minute and 30 seconds until it can be reactivated. I haven't talked about it yet, but anchors could be corrupted, and then if they are, you can't activate it until those wear off. If you currently have 2 minutes or above on the clock and a teammate activates an anchor, you're wasting a few seconds. On paper, it might not look that bad, but it actually can be detrimental later on. The reason you want to manage your anchors and the timer really well is to allow the team to have some time to deal with hordes, call in reinforcements, or even travel time. Some of the maps are really large and really lengthy, so if one of the pathways to an anchor is really really lengthy, this will give some teammates some time to go and travel, grab the anchor, and come on back. Alright, this is the very last thing about anchors, I promise. Every 10 hazard waves, there's gonna be a small little break period where the team can kind of relax and get organized once again. During this, you're not gonna be able to activate any of the anchors, but don't worry about that. You're going to be able to call in reinforcements, do a little bit of shopping, or kill off the small amounts of anomalies that are remaining. The reason I bring this up is because of the anchor part. All of the anchors are going to be reset, so they're going to be able to be activated once the timer for this break period goes over. However, you do not want to activate anchors after this break period is over. Your full team is given 2 minutes and 30 seconds automatically when the break is over. So if you activate an anchor, you lose out so much time already. Ready. Not only are you going to have to wait for the anchor to reactivate, which takes about 1 minute and 30 seconds, but you also lose out on the free 30 seconds that the anchor would have given you. So just be careful and watch the clock before you go and activate an anchor. Alright, enough about anchors, let's get moving to the next topic. The next topic is going to be regarding reinforcements. This is a smaller detail, but it could be pretty helpful. The area you call reinforcements in is going to be the laptop. Not only does it show you the reinforcement timer if it's currently active, looking at the laptop can also show you if there are any players awaiting to be called back in. If there are players in the lobby but they're not readied up, then it won't let you call anything in. The symbol itself above the laptop position also changes depending if it's currently active and ready or if it's not active. If you do call in reinforcements, I would recommend defending the position, either using a landmine or using a nano grenade. While on the topic of equipment, you can actually hold items such as your auxiliary for as long as you want and it will not activate until you click it. This can be beneficial if you're anticipating a situation. Let's say you're far away from the main area and you're running flash grenades, then you can hold down the button and and if you do encounter a horde of enemies, you can throw them by clicking. Or if there's no horde of enemies, then you can just stop holding the button for your item. Well, on the topic of resources, let's talk about the resupply beacons. Resupply beacons are these containers which hold ammunition inside of it. At first glance, this might not look that important, but you 
could be oh so wrong. This is really important. Every time you grab some ammunition from one of these beacons, it will fill up all the way to your maximum capacity of magazines. So this means if your maximum is 7 and you're currently at 5, you'll only get 2, compared to if you're on your last mag, you'll fill up 100%. This is especially really important to players who have large amounts of maximum capacities for their magazines. For example, if a player is currently running assault and they have a maximum capacity of 17 mags, one of these ammunition packs will fill it up completely. All right, enough about resources and team management. What can you do alone as a player? Well, for starters, I bet you didn't know that you had a powerful tool that you might have overlooked. That is going to be a laser. More specifically, your laser attachment on a firearm. The laser attachment isn't on every gun, but it's on a good amount of guns, and this is important. Usually the color is green, but if you hover over an anomaly, then it changes to red because it's a hostile. This can be really helpful if you're trying to spot an invisible anomaly. If you hear one, then pull out your laser pointer and see if it's near you. All right, the final thing we'll go over is kill conditions. The game currently has a few passives, either connected to a class like specialist or either in the skills that you can select. Some of these skills, just to name them, would be restock and resupply alongside anarchists. These mentioned along with ones connected to a class can be activated through different means other than your primary or secondary. For example, if you use a marker and call in for air support, you can actually activate these when you get the kills off of the anomalies. Another example is if you throw down a nano grenade any anomalies inside of the field that die will actually count towards these passives. If you are curious about something and you want to check, you can look in the bottom left hand corner and see if you get a status effect. Alright, that's going to be everything for this video. I hope this video was very informative and helpful, and I hope this has helped you in some way with your progression while playing Contact A-888. All of these are just small little details that I picked up while playing the game for so long, and I hope they can be used and helpful to anyone who watches the video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see ya.